Hey everybody, Mike here. In today's video, we got some good stuff, so I'm really excited to go over that. But in the meantime, make sure you subscribe while you're here. I'm releasing new content constantly. Unlike some of the other channels that are out there, I'm always creating new stuff. So be sure to subscribe and make sure you hit the bell so that you get notified when new stuff does come out. That said, let's jump right into today's video. All right, so getting into the topic of today's video, we are talking about how to create a firewall rule in NSX that references a regular IP address and not a group inside of NSX. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the concept of groups, let me break it down really simple. A group in NSX is basically a container that can hold either VMs or bare metal servers based on their IP address. Um, we can do dynamic membership. We can say, if you have this tag, if that VM has that tag, we'll say the blue tag, then it is automatically inside of the blue group, for example. And we can use that as a way to set up compliance zones and very easily and very powerfully, say, block PCI to non-PCI, for example, or block tenant A to tenant B. So there is a lot of power in groups, but the area that was always kind of painful in older versions of NSX was I wanna just block IPA to IPB, or I just wanna block VMA to going to this IP address, or maybe I wanna permit it. Doing that before was kind of painful because we had to say block VMA to going to this group, and then inside of that group, we would reference that actual IP. But that sounds like a big headache. So let me get into the lab, and I'm actually gonna show you how to do this. All right, so first thing I wanna show you is our vCenter environment. We have Web01A and Web02A. Now these are both, if you look at the IP address, this was 254.58 and this one is 254.57. So they are both on the same port group or the same VLAN, but that doesn't matter. We are going to still use them as our example. So our goal here is to actually stop communication between the two. In fact, to be more specific, we wanna create a rule blocking Web01A from pinging the IP address of Web02A. So to do that, we are going to get into NSX here and let's head over to security and we'll go down to distributed firewall. Now from here, I am in the application category. We could create this rule anywhere, but this is fine. It's basically a blank install. So what we're going to do is use this policy right here. I think I called it micro segmentation demo and there's nothing in it. If I expand it, you can see there's no rules here. So we're gonna click the dots right here and we're just going to add a rule. This is actually the process of adding a firewall rule. And we'll give it a name. I'm gonna say block web01a to IP of web02a, something like that. All right, for the source, the way we did it before in previous versions of NSX is the same. We're just gonna click this pencil and we're going to select a group that has our source VM inside of it. In this case, it happens to have the web VMs actually has web01a inside of it already. So we can select that group right here. So I'm gonna select that and hit apply. All right, for destinations, now we are going to click the pencil just like we did before, but this time, instead of spe specifying another group, we are going to click IP addresses right here. And here we can enter either an individual IP or an entire range using the CIDR format. So in this case, I'm going to put the IP address of Web02A, which I think is .57. Now I'm gonna make sure I put this in CIDR format. So I'm gonna do slash 32 that'll match only this IP address. And I'm gonna hit tab. So that's what we wanna see. We can see that little black background now. That means it took that input. So that's good. Now we can hit apply. There we go. Now we can see that our actual firewall rule is from a group to a regular IP address. And we could take this a step further. Instead of doing from a group, we could just click the pencil and say, let's not do that. Let's just do it from our source VM. We'll do 258, there we go and we can hit apply. There we go. So that should look a little more familiar to those that have more traditional firewall experience. We just created a regular layer three rule, block this IP to this IP. Now we could take it a step further and block a specific layer four port, but in this case, I wanna block all traffic. So I'm gonna make sure I change the action here. I'm gonna set it to um, reject. I'm gonna do that because that'll generate an ICMP destination host prohibited message Boy, that's a mouthful. The point is the reject is going to generate a response via ICMP that is going to tell us it was blocked by a firewall. 
which I want in this case because we want to illustrate that it was working or that it was taking an effect. So I'm gonna select that. Before I hit publish, let's go ahead and do a test, make sure that we can ping, and then we wanna retest after we run this rule. So to do that, let's go over to our console of our web one AVM. And after we type in our password here, we're just gonna run that ping. So this is just going to be a ping from web one a to web two a Again, web two a is kind of simulating or could simulate a legacy server, a non-NSX server, Again, a physical server, it doesn't matter. An endpoint on the internet, we don't care. It's just an IP address. It just happens to be that I have a virtualized lab and that's what we're using. So let me go ahead and ping that IP, 57. Okay, so we see we're getting responses here. So I'm gonna let that run. We're going to flip over to NSX and then I'm going to publish that rule and we'll come back and make sure that it's working. So let's go to NSX and I'm just gonna publish that rule. And we'll see an in progress here. If we refresh that, we should see success. That means that it was programmed on that VNIC of that VM. In this case, let's go back here. Okay, so look at this. We see now we get a destination host prohibited. We see that right here. Now that's perfect. That's what we wanted. But interestingly enough, with pings, they're not uh, bi-directional. They're not stateful traffic. So let me keep this going. I'm gonna keep this ping going. So this is being blocked from 58 to 57 is blocked. But if we try the reverse, let's go into our other VM and let's ping web01a. Look at that. So the ping is working because it's not stateful. So we actually created a rule in one direction. If we wanted to block traffic in the reverse, we would actually have to go back into here. And there's a couple ways we can do this. I'm just gonna do this really simple. I'm gonna actually command click the source here. I'm gonna put that in the destination so hopefully you see what I did here. So all I did is I command clicked these. So basically if the, it's going from dot 58 to 57, it's gonna be blocked 57 to 58, it's gonna be blocked and vice versa. So I typically, I would have broken that up into two rules um, because technically we're, we're blocking 58 to 58, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. But this was just a quick and dirty way to do this. So I'm gonna hit publish. Now that we've done that, let's go back there. We should see Yep, look at that. So we see now we get destination host prohibited. So that is going from web 2 a to web one a And we should have no change to the other one. Yep, we still see destination host prohibited. So just to kind of recap, this was just showing you the whole point behind this whole video was just showing you that it is possible to create these rules based on an IP address only and not specifically referencing a certain VM. Now, the last thing I wanna clear up before we wrap up this video, Someone out there is probably asking, well, how did it know which VNIC to program this rule on? The answer is in the apply to field. Since we have apply to set to the default of DFW, which stands for distributed firewall, that essentially means this rule was gonna be programmed on any VM in the NSX environment. So it just happens to have programmed this on web 01A, web 02A. Now, the point is, I guess this is most effective if we actually have at least one of either the source or destination should live in the NSX for this to work the way that I did it. But that said, hopefully you get where I was going with this and hopefully you know something you didn't know before you started this video. So that said, I hope everyone's staying safe and healthy. Before you close out this video, make sure you smash the subscribe button and the like button while you're at it. Just do both. It makes sense. Just be an overachiever. In the meantime, stay nerdy and do something clever because I just ran out of words. I think I just malfunctioned. I glitched. Oh boy.